TNA Wrestling announced that Kid Cash has been released. Cash was outspoken during an interview with Wrestling Live News, very unlike him to be outspoken at an interview with the media. No, he's normally so reserved. Stating that he was upset TNA was prohibiting him from wrestling on ECW's One Night Stand pay-per-view. WWE had officially sent word that former ECW wrestlers under TNA contract were welcome to work the ECW branded pay-per-view, including Cash, Raven, Jerry Lynn, uh, Shane Douglas would be another, there's a few other on, on the roster at the moment. Cash was known as an outspoken locker room presence dating back to his days in ECW. Despite his hot-headed nature, which may be all that prevents him from getting a serious look by WWE, he is one of the most polished all-around acts in TNA, which you can never deny of him. He's great. Yeah, whenever he's in the ring, he's killing it. I do think the problem is, like, he's not a top guy. Hmm. It's not the case that I think Kid Cash is badly positioned in this company. I think he is a world-class mid-card heel. Like, one of the best mid-card heels you'll ever get. But I do think he's a mid-card heel. You don't see, like, even a spot to try him out? I don't think so. I don't think I'd buy him in that kind of role. I don't think he's even suited for that kind of role. Like, I think he works best when he's, like, a guy with a grudge and everyone's holding him down, which is, like, art imitating life because that's how he feels all the time anyway. (laughs) But Mm. as a mid-card guy who has like a chip on his shoulder and believes he should get the world when he doesn't deserve the world. Like his his, his real life personality is his best pro wrestling character. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I mean, I don't disagree. Do you think they could have tried Cash at a higher level in TNA up to this point? I do think so, I think. Mm -hmm. Only because, like, what are the alternatives? You know, you might as well give it a shot. He delivers in ring. He he has a, like a a big personality when he's out there. You could do him as like you could try him, especially when AJ was world champ. Yeah, you you gave a month to Glenn Gilberti. You could probably try Kid Cash for a while. <laughs> yeah, like just with who else is like at that level at this point. Yeah, like but hmm, because I even think about the AJ feud, which is the closest he's come to like being a headline act in this company. Where, like, he was in the Jared first for a while, because Lord knows everybody is. And then, you know, he was in the AJ sphere, where he had some good matches with AJ, but not, like, blow-away matches with AJ. But they were, like, main event-level matches. They main evented a few of the weekly pay-per-views. And I I don't think he blew, like, blew the doors off that spot. But who knows if with time he could have. That's true. Not, like, in a ring-ring time sense, just with a being in that position for a long enough time. Yeah, this is not the end of Kid Cash. We'll talk about him again in 2011. Yeah, I, I, he, we, he will not get a remember win. Until 2020? That's that's his yeah. last date. He, he wrestled Chase Stevens on the TNA special in 2020. Oh no, it was Hernandez he wrestled. I don't count one-offs, but a second run is a second run. Yeah, so he gets a, a full year there in 2011, 2012 that we can talk about. But Well, more or less a full year. So we won't be talking about Kid Cash for a while, but this is the end of his run. He finally did one media interview too many, and they're like, fine, just go. Like, I understand, like, why they didn't let him go, because one, he's a talented performer, and two, you don't want to set the precedent that, that people can badmouth you in the media to get out of a contract. <laughs> they have to punch Sammy Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> but also, there does reach a point where you're like, oh, all right, this isn't working for either of us, just fuck off. Yeah. Which I guess this was the point. You go where you want to... Let's see how it works out for him. In stark contrast to Kid Cash a week earlier, AJ Styles expressed a 100% commitment to TNA during an interview with Wrestle Talk Radio, the same people. When asked about the possibility of a WWE run, AJ said that he doesn't want to go there because there are too many people there already and he wants to focus on making TNA better. He said he was shocked by the recent releases. They released people like uh, Matt Hardy and Rhino this month. There was a a lot of links of Matt Hardy to TNA, naturally, because Jeff is there. And that in 90 days, TNA has a chance to do something great. He said that Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero are the best. And it's so backwards that they're not champions. He added, letting Matt Hardy go was stupid. He hopes TNA will capitalize on it. He said he would like to see Matt and Jeff together because Matt brings out the best in his brother. He also put over Gail Kim and Molly Holly as two girls who can wrestle better than a lot of the guys. He said he considers Chris Daniels one of the best in the business and wouldn't be know where he'd be without him. He also credited Jerry Lynn for taking him to the next level as a worker. TNA's about to get some big pickups. Yeah, we're we're coming in, like, because I was just saying that one of the excuses I'll give Dusty is that there's not a ton of roster depth, which is the reason you see Chris Saban and Michael Shane. But some of that is self-inflicted because, like, you wouldn't have to see that same match over and over if you had Alex Shelley and Sanjay Dutt, which he didn't want to book, you know? So, yeah, 
it's part of that is self-inflicted, but they, they do lack a bit of depth in a lot of their divisions so that they they can't really run matches on TV without doing like tags or six mans, which they should just do tags or six mans if you want to fill in that gap. Do tags and six mans, but just make them important. Yeah, because the main event of the go-home show is Styles and Hardy against Abyss and Raven, and that's a good, cool match. I think I, I, I loved it. Which we'll talk about when we get into the show. But yeah, you, you can be creative with a small roster. We're talking about that on Rain Takers at the moment as well. Uh, yeah, well, like that New Japan roster is not big. Yeah. And they still find a way to make these shows be big and impactful. And, you know, it helped having Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kazushika Okada and Shizuka and Like, it's a real high level roster. But, you know, it is essentially like 14 people with like five outsiders that they bring in. Yeah, they make smart use of outsiders, which TNA used to do. They, like, they used to do the X-Cups, and the people in the X-Cups would hang around for a while and do matches. And they don't do that anymore. And then you'd find a guy like Hector Gaza that you want to push. Yeah. He then reflected fondly on his time at Ring of Honor working with Loki, Brian Dennison, Paul London, and Jamie Rave. He did criticize the all-cage match format for lockdown, stating, It's obvious to everyone it's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, Garrett. Even your hero, AJ Styles, agrees. But the goal was to still have an incredible show. He said his real name is Alan Jones, but he was called AJ throughout high school. That's where AJ came from. He took the name Styles because he teamed with a wrestler with that last name on an indie show early in his career. And then he invented the Styles class by doing it on his brother while playing in a trampoline. His brother-in-law. Oh, very important. <laughs> just, uh, which is a way funnier image. <laughs> just messing around with your brother-in-law doing Styles classes? Yeah. Like, ah, come here. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, no, I don't want to do this. Nah, come here. <laughs> it's a Styles Clash too, which is like a uh, famous for nearly breaking wrestlers' necks if taken badly. For someone who doesn't know anything. It'll be fine. Uh, he probably got a giant jump with it, to be fair, on a trampoline. It's true. Your neck would be fine if you did the bad version. It would survive. I, I've been folded up on a, on a on my neck on a trampoline. Yeah, and you're doing okay. Yeah, sure. 